Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to edit this Seattle um, RAW file using Nick Software's complete collection. This is sort of rehashing what Janice Went had done on um, the Monday, Monday webinar uh, for those who weren't able to attend. Um, so let's start by opening up this RAW file and I'm opening up inside of Camera Raw here in Photoshop CS5. Again, I'm using the Mac just simply because it's a good recording platform. Um, generally, I'll edit my images on the PC. Both platforms have their strengths and weaknesses, and this isn't really about which one you should use or not. Um, you'll notice that my image uh, has a little bit of um, overexposure in the lights area, but I'm okay with that. Um, lights are bright, so that's no big deal. Um, I don't have a perfect looking mountain histogram because this is a dark image so that's as the histogram should be. It's mostly dark so everything should be piled onto the dark side. So with that in mind I'm going to just go ahead and accept the defaults. I haven't done anything here and open the object. Now this is going to open up um, a smart object. So I'm going to go ahead and just rasterize this because for this particular demo I don't need that. Um, the advantage of the smart object is that you can go back into camera raw at any time by double clicking on the image um, for a nice non-destructive um, workflow but for my purposes here that's not required um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go try to deal with the noise of this image and so let's go ahead and open up define 2 the reason why we do noise reduction first is because if later in your workflow you're trying to apply some strong filters or doing some you know special effects and you've got noise in your image and that you didn't notice earlier on um, that special effect may um, add enhance that noise to a significant amount to the point where your image looks really bad and doing the noise reduction later on may have a negative impact on some of your earlier work so generally speaking um, you should do noise reduction as your first step and as Janice mentioned she does it on every uh, file. Now this is image was recorded at 100 ISO and so you would expect that there not wouldn't be very much noise but I was doing multiple long exposures and um, sensor was getting hot and uh, yeah, a lot of factors can come into um, how much noise you end up with so I'm going to zoom in and show you that there is indeed noise. You'll notice this working thing pops up all the time don't worry about it it's not um, something you have to wait on it's just an artifact of what um, the software does to recalculate and uh, generally speaking you can just ignore it. Um, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here and show you now whenever I click it shows me the before image. Um, we've accepted the defaults, default noise reduction. I'm going to go into a split screen mode so you can see we had a lot of noise despite being at ISO 100 and then um, it's applied some good um, sharpening, or excuse me, noise reduction right off the bat. But one of the things about noise reduction is that it can reduce detail in you know, structures and so on. So we want to try to see if we can do something about that. Uh, maybe make things a little bit better here. So let's see, let's come in and do a reduction. And what we're going to do is that reduction, we're going to do it with um, the the negative control point. What we're trying to do here, here is on this building, we're going to try to reduce some of the noise reduction that was applied. Now when I put this on here without doing anything, it's negative control point, it completely gets rid of the noise reduction. Um, but there's still noise that we want to get rid of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what each of these sliders does. Now contrast noise reduction, that's what we really typically think of when we think of noise reduction. Oops, I need to use switch over to my Wacom. I was using my uh, trackpad and that tends to be hard to work with. <laughs> and so if I crank this thing all the way up to 200, you'll see that it totally obliviates the detail of the building. Um, that's what you see when people who go crazy with noise reduction uh, end up doing. Now let's turn that completely off for a moment. And then now let's take show you what happens when I do color noise reduction. And just for kicks, we're going to go ahead and kick it up to 200. And you'll see that it doesn't do a whole lot, 
but what it does do is it gets rid of any color noise. Um, so it pres preserves detail, but gets rid of color noise. And so um, a lot of times, especially you know, for an image like this where you're never going to be looking at this image this close, the noise that you want to get rid of is the color noise and you want to preserve as much detail as possible. So I'm going to go with uh, Janice's recommendation uh, for this one and do um, about 25 oops about 25 for the um, contrast noise and then for the color noise um, she had used about 88 percent so I'm going to go ahead and follow her lead 89 close enough um, and so if I look at the before and after view here you'll see um, you know, very quickly that it got rid of some noise. Notice this area here before and after. Um, and so our building's looking a little cleaner without destroying um, the detail, especially in these little uh, window areas. Um, you could really easily ob obliterate them, but now we've got, um, they're actually coming in a little bit clearer because some of the window pane noise is being removed. So now let's come back out and see what's going on here. So um, we've cleaned up the noise a little bit and we want to go deal with the sky now. Now the sky, um, actually let's go back in one more time. The sky you'll see has got noise reduction applied um, but it's still just a little bit noisy. So let's add some more noise reduction here and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and kick this guy up because what there's no detail in the sky so what we want to do is get rid of that noise in the sky and we can be a little more aggressive with it so we're going to kick up the contrast noise um, up to like around 160 or so and so if we back off here a little bit and what I'm doing is I'm pressing the alt key and clicking We've done a good job of cleaning up our sky um, and maintaining detail. And what we want to do with this, um, let's see, let's go back to this view. What we want to do with this uh, viewpoint control here is we want to apply it to all of the sky. So you'll see now I've applied it to the whole sky area. And the way viewpoint controls work is that they're based on the color that you click on. So if we want to see what this is doing, um, Let's actually come over here and take a look at our um, contrast noise mask. And you'll see that everything that's white um, is getting the noise reduction applied, and everything that's black is getting ignored. Um, let's click this off. That's the first one we did. It's the second one. So you can see. Um, the impact of the contrast noise reduction and then the color noise reduction. See, we didn't do very much uh, color on there. Everything's getting a little bit of color. Um, and so you have a better idea of what's actually happening and how the your point controls are creating a mask for you uh, under the covers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, try to get some of this a uh, little more noise off of the buildings um, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna duplicate it and so I think we just need to do an alt and then grab another one and we're gonna just put this on our building here and the reason why we're doing this is we're just trying to get our buildings to where they're having detail preserved but getting um, as much benefit as they can from the noise reduction and I'm going to just drop these all over the place on the buildings again the idea here is detail preservation And then, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to also do the same thing with the sky. 
And so for this guy here, we're going to take this one and we're going to bring it in here. We're going to reduce this down a little bit. Since we had a big one, we're going to kind of drop it in here where in between buildings the noise is kind of heavy. Make sure we get these guys down the right. Oops. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Oops, I think I was actually pressing the Alt key when I shouldn't have been. Um, here's a uh, cool tip for you though when you click the Command key and drag one of these, you can actually see the impact of your mask. Um, I think it's the Control key on the PC, um, but Notice as I make the circle bigger, it impacts more of the image. As I make it smaller, it impacts less of the image. And it's keying off of the color that I'm clicked on, but it also has does have impact on adjacent colors. Um, and I can do that for any of these. If I come up here and click on this one and adjust the circle while holding the Command key, you'll see the impact of the noise reduction. And that's, again, while we come in here and put these other control points is to counteract what's happening in the sky make sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, let's copy this guy and bring it over here. And oh, oops, keep forgetting to let go of that alt key. And then let's do one more right here. And so I think we're pretty happy with the noise here. Uh, noise reduction here. We're going to say OK. And what Vivesa is doing is it's creating, or excuse me, uh, Define's doing is creating a new layer. Um, it by default will create a layer mask, but since we said OK, it's going to delete that layer mask after it's done its uh, magic. If we just chose the brush button, we'd have an option to paint in however much we want. If you forget to press the brush, brush button, you can always add a layer mask and um, enable and disable um, the noise by simply masking out where you don't want it. Uh, sometimes I'll do it that way because it's uh, really fast if I want to do like a quick selection on the sky or something like that.